What's up, well that's good fam? Y'all, it is the month of May and I have been anticipating this month for a long time because hopefully by the time you're listening to this, I will have a little baby girl in my arms at my home. And so the month of May is pre-recorded with moms that inspire me. Today we actually have Lindsay Arnold on the podcast and I'm so pumped because she was one of my good friends whenever I was out on Dancing with the Stars. She is a professional dancer. She's a YouTuber, Instagram influencer. She's a wife, she's a mom. She's so much fun and I can't wait to get her advice because she just had a newborn named Sage and they are so cute on their Instagram. I've been DMing her advice and I was like, you know what, I need to have you on the podcast. So I'm looking forward to this conversation and hope that we both can learn a lot from her. All right, Lindsay, welcome to the Whoa That's Good podcast. I am so thrilled that you said yes to being on. Oh my gosh, I'll say yes a million times. I've been so excited about this to chat with you and just reconnect. It's been so long, but I'm so grateful that like we have been able to stay connected over yes. the years through in social media. In a really cool way, I know. Yes, it's, it's like so fun. Every now and then we'll slide up and say, hey girl, I hope hey, you're doing, you doing good. I know, I and, love it. And it makes me very happy, but also hopefully we can like actually connect in person no, Very we soon. need to. I know. With yes. our daughters, which is crazy. Oh because my gosh. seriously, time has flown. Last time we were together was Dancing with the Stars. And I mean, I was in high school. You and your boyfriend at the time had just started dating. I hadn't even met Christian yet. Now we're both married where you have a daughter. I'm about to have a daughter. I mean, what is life? I literally get chills just thinking about that. Like, I know. It's so crazy because, yeah, you think back to that time, someone would have told us, like, this is where you're going to be in six years. I think no. we both would have been like, what? No, I know. there's no way. I would have like, been like, it's just hopefully, but probably not, I know. <laughs> you know? Exactly. It's so cool and so crazy how time literally flies by. Flies. Like, it just goes so fast, but so grateful because so many awesome things can happen in between all that craziness. <laughs> oh, so grateful. Well, for those of you who don't know Lindsay, Lindsay is, you do a lot of things, but you're professional on Dancing with the Stars, professional dancer, and you are so much fun. I, I can't even lie. Whenever I was on the show, I used to think you and Whitney were the coolest people ever. And I was oh like, gosh. they're my friends, you know, I, I was uh, like, well, yeah, totally loved y'all and was so thankful for y'all. Y'all made me feel at home. So your dancer, you and your sisters have a YouTube channel together, the Arnold sisters, you're an Instagram or you're a mom, you're a wife, you have a lot going on. Um, so you definitely are an in inspiration to a lot of people, but what is the best piece of advice that someone's ever given you? Okay. So this is definitely a very loaded question because sure. I feel like I could go on and on and on and on and I have to break it up into two parts. So I'm sorry because no, I, I love feel that. like there's so many aspects of life. So I would say the best piece of advice I got as far as like life and career, um, this actually happened. So grew up in Utah, kind of a small town, not like totally small, but definitely mm -hmm. smaller than LA. And sure. when I um, joined So You Think You Can Dance, that was the first dance show I went on. It was a big like eye opener for me of the real right. world and what goes on and the different kind of people that are out there and the different situations you'll be put into. And I remember my parents before heading out to LA, they just reminded me stay true to who you are and mm. remember who you are because you're going to be tested in so many ways. You're going to experience new things. You're going to be presented opportunities that you've never been presented before. Mm. And through all of that, try to remain true to who you are. And of course wow. that when they said it to me, it was like a, okay, that's just my parents trying to keep me out of trouble. Right, like right. that's all that does. But it evolved into this thing that really, I think projected my career because had I not been true to myself, authentic, genuine, I don't think that opportunities would have come for me. For if sure. I had spent my time trying to be something I wasn't or trying to fit this mold that I thought was necessary to do mm -hmm. what I do, I wouldn't be where I am today. So yeah, wow. I think that has really translated really well. And I'm just so grateful for wow. my parents for instilling that into me because I think that's such a good thing. And so then the good. other piece of advice, I have no idea who gave this to me, so I'm sorry. <laughs> but this is a relationship piece of advice. So I think like in the first like year of marriage, I don't know, how long have you and Christian been married now? A year and a half. Okay, so for me and Sam, we dated for a really long time, but I feel like in the dating stage, like everyone's kind of like, I don't wanna say on their best behavior, but like yeah. you're just like really there to please. Like you're there for to please sure. each other and you wanna prove how like you are the right person for each other. And you get married and you have the honeymoon phase and then things get comfortable and it's easy to kind of forget that like phase of just doing doing things for each other right 
And I remember it would cause contention. It would cause these things of, do you not love me anymore because we're not doing these same things? And I genuinely don't remember who said it to be, but someone said, Lindsay, in a relationship, assume the best out of your partner. Mm, Assume that they are always there to support you. Assume that the things they're doing aren't intentional to hurt your feelings. I love that. And then go about conversations in that way. So if you have an issue or something comes up, go to them in a sense of not, you're doing this and it's making me feel this way, more of a sense of, this is how I'm feeling. You may not be Mm -hmm. aware that you're making me feel this way, but let's figure out so that we don't have to have this anymore. Right. So I feel like that's been really, and then that has translated over into work. I mean, yeah. on Dancing with the Stars, you work with partners and it's kind of like a relationship. Oh, and for so, sure. Yes, you have to have those skills. Like you have to know how to work with different personalities. And yeah. I think it's so important to remember that like not everybody functions the same way that you do. Yeah. So you have to sort of be able to adapt and assume that they are trying their best yeah. and then go from there and work I on things that. from there. That's such great advice and honestly good advice for just our world. I feel like, you know, if we would just assume the best out of people and that their intentions are actually kind or good or not what we might perceive in a moment, like we would be much more pleasant people and get along a whole lot better. And it's interesting that you said that about just that putting on your best self, because Christian and I talk about this a lot. I've even shared a message on this. Is like there's such a huge difference in being from being liked and being loved. And I think because our social media culture trains us for what it looks like to be liked, it's like, well, if I want to be liked, then I have to be presentable, and I have to look perfect, and I have to be on my best game. But being loved is very different. Being loved is about being known for who you are, and it's like you know, you can be loved by someone and maybe not even be liked in a moment. You know, you, oh, you might be 100%. like totally like not likable today, but your husband still but loves still you. Love you. Yes. yes. And that's like the, that assuming the best, like, you know, I love you, not because you're perfect, not because you're presentable, but because I know you. And, yes. and that's such a freeing thing. And so in our world, if we could just, you know, cut that whole like business out and actually get to know yeah. each other, hear each other out, we'd be a lot more pleasant people. So I love that you said that. I think it's so like you would want people to do that for you on your worst days when you say something that maybe you didn't mean or you step out of line and you know that you were wrong. You would hope that people would assume that you didn't have bad intentions so that you didn't mean to hurt somebody's feelings like you would hope for that people sure. would assume that so yeah why not do that for others and give other people's that grace that you would want to get as well yep that's so good nobody actually likes cancel culture you know no. but we all kind of can feed into it and so the yeah. more we can assume the best the more we can listen hear people out get people the benefit of the doubt the better i love that that's so good so you mentioned that you were on so you think you can dance And your life has been crazy because weren't you one of the youngest to ever be a pro on Dancing with the Stars besides Julianne? Julianne Huff was the only other one that was younger than me. What's up, guys? Morgan here from Team Live Original. While Sadie is out being the best mom ever to Honey James, I'm stepping in to tell you guys about this incredible offer for Father's Day. Guys, did you know that regular men's body wash is completely thin and watered down? I don't even know why they use that stuff. But Duke Cannon is coming out with its brand new Thick Body Wash. Thick Body Wash earns its name by being three times thicker than common body washes. It comes in a huge container in four masculine scents. It's American-made, hey and it's just $9 each or $30 for all four cents. And it's truly a bang for your buck. 17 ounces in each bottle, which guys, that is huge. So for the scents, they have these. Bourbon Oak Barrel, Naval Diplomacy, Old Glory, Productivity, and Thick Body Wash has a superior lather so you can throw out your old loofah and just use Thick Body Wash. So to take advantage of this amazing offer, visit DukeCannon.com and use the promo code WO for 10% off your entire order and free shipping with orders over $20. That's DukeCannon.com and promo code WO. That's W-H-O-A for 10% off all their great products and free shipping when you spend $20 or more. This is one-stop shopping for Father's Day. So go ahead and get your thick body wash now. So looking back at, I would say your younger years, but your younger years were also in with stars. Did you ever think your life would actually pan out the way that it did? And how did you go from, you know, being in Utah to so you can dance to dance with stars professional? So absolutely did not think my life was going to pan out the way that it did. I was in my final year of high school. I had been accepted to a college. I was already enrolling in classes full, like 
fully prepared to go to college in the fall. I was going to study physical therapy, wanted to be a sports therapist. Like that was my like thing. Like I was like, dance is done. I've done wow. what you do with dance and that's, that's it. Wow. And it was actually my mom who literally dragged me to the So You Think You Can Dance audition. <laughs> I was just like, no, like I'm not going to go. I'm not going to make it. Like I even hate, I'm like, Lindsay, what were you thinking? Wow. But she dragged me to this and I got on that show first. And then it's interesting because even mm-hmm. after that show, I still didn't like foresee everything else. I was like, right. oh, okay, I'm going to do this show. I was like, it'll be done in August. I'll come home and then I'll go on. I'll go back to college. Yeah. And then things just started happening. I went on So You Think You Can Dance. Then they had a tour. And then right after the tour, Dancing with the Stars called. Wow. And then I started that. And I think after my first season on Dancing with the Stars, I started to realize like, okay, I think this is actually yeah. the direction I'm going now. But it's funny yeah. looking back that while I was in it, I didn't even register what was happening because it yeah. was just happening. Yeah. And yeah, it was were a you, win, but... Were you intimidated by that? Like getting asked many Dancing with the Stars, did it scare you? Oh, terrified me because I, first of all, just graduated high school, had never lived outside of my house. Like, it's not Mm -hmm. like I like had lived on my own. I was used to living with my parents, Right. moving out to LA. And then the most intimidating intimidating part was that I was asked to be a pro my first season. So you know how there's pro and there's troop. Most people are troop for a few years. Yeah. So they can like get some practice under their belt. Right. And then they go pro. Well, they asked me to be a pro the first season. I'm 18 wow. years old. I've never choreographed a dance before. Oh my never, gosh. I mean, I maybe had taught like little kids. Right. But I've never taught like another adult. So that <laughs> oh my was, gosh. It was so intimidating, but it was crazy because like when you're in it, you don't have time to like yeah, no. think. You just go. Because the I'm Mondays sure are know. coming. Yeah. Yeah. It's like there's nothing you can, it's like if you're not ready, it doesn't matter. It's still going it's to still happen. It's still live. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it was very intimidating. And then I actually, um, I was a pro that very first season. Mm-hmm. And then they um, bumped me down to troop for five seasons after that. And wow. that was where I had to find like my personal growth, my confidence. Because that was just a huge, I mean, right. to start out at the top, get bumped down. Not that troop right. is bad in any way. I mean, that's an incredible job. I'm so grateful yeah. for it. But that was where it kind of like, that's where the intimidation came into effect a little bit more because I started to think maybe I wasn't good enough. Right. So then that's where I was like, I've got to prove myself constantly. And right. I think that's sort of, that was more of like the, that was more of the struggle for me, honestly. I feel like our stories are similar in different ways because, you know, people ask like when I started speaking and it was the same way. It was like, I didn't even like say I wanted to be a speaker, think I was going to be a speaker, like nothing. And then all of a sudden, like, I'm just like, on stage speaking and people are watching on YouTube and it's like happening and it, it the same thing is they didn't register yet like it took yeah, me like a year doing. of doing it before I was like oh okay this is what I'm doing you know yes. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. So crazy I think I think God goes so far before you and you know purpose people people want to find their purpose and your purpose is kind of a journey like you can yeah. have your purpose in every season of life but it's gonna continue to unfold it's not like you're gonna wake up one day and be 25 and be like I figured it out like here it is no. like it's a continual change it will. So for you, I mean, comparison's obviously like a, a huge struggle for girls in our generation and probably every generation. As a dancer, do you feel, was it hard for you not to compare yourself to the people at the le- in the left and the right? Because I feel like even when I was on Dance of the Stars, it's so hard not to compare yourself because you're literally competing against everybody. Yes. And you're being compared to everybody. So how have you wrestled through that on the show and kind of in life? That is honestly been a valid thing in my life since I can even remember. Because growing up, I mean, starting at um, eight years old, I started competing in ballroom competitions, jazz competitions, and it never stopped. I Mm -hmm. mean, I just was every weekend, pretty much, I was at a ballroom competition or a jazz competition. And at these competitions, you're directly competing against other people that are your age that are doing the same things as you. And you're being compared and you're sometimes you do better than someone. Sometimes you don't do as well. And I actually think that that helped me later on in life because I was so used to that format of Uh, this is what you do. You work hard, you put time in, you do the best that you can. And at the end of the day, people are going to have their opinions. Mm -hmm. But if you put in the work, if you do everything you can, then that's that's really it's out of your hands at that point. It's true. 
But that's not to say that going out to LA and being in that world and now it's my career and my mm -hmm. profession and the way that I make money, like that then changes the game. It's no longer just like fun and games anymore. It's yeah. my livelihood. Right. So it definitely is a constant, I don't want to say struggle, but it's definitely something that I have to constantly work on. Like I have to yeah. be aware of it and I have to check in my, with myself. Yeah. Social media is a huge thing. It's every day. It's direct comparison of your life to somebody else's life yeah. and seeing exactly what maybe you wish you had more of or maybe oh that's like it's just this constant, constant comparison and I really do have to make sure I check in with myself and yeah my favorite way to combat comparison is to focus on gratitude and the things that I do have and the things that I do enjoy and that I it's love great. and I think that's kind of the biggest way that I can sort of navigate that in this that's day and great. age right now. I love that. I think gratitude is like the biggest secret weapon of all time. Like it is like it really is the most underrated weapon that we have because yes. like in any season of life, whether it's um, comparing yourself to others, whether it's going through something hard, going through e even the ups and downs of pregnancy. But when you have gratitude, it's like yeah. it shifts your pers perspective every time to the good. But I, I think that even with comparison, your parents advice going back is so good about knowing who you are and our yeah. whole tagline is literally behind me live original it's like live fully who you are and when you're confident in who you are like you said like when you went out there and you know it probably saved you from so much stuff just knowing that that's who you are so you can say exactly. at the end of the day I did all that I could I did the best that I could and they have a different opinion and that's okay because I know who I am and I'm walking away proud so it exactly. changes things um I want to touch so you true about so when I was on Dancing with the Stars I did was like not prepared for how physically demanding and crazy it is oh holy my goodness holy right? cow <laughs> oh my gosh it is it is so hard like when people say was it fun I'm like oh it's the most fun thing ever but it is also the hardest thing ever Literally and the hardest. so y'all really really go through it but obviously like on the show you get in really good shape really fast like I never had a six-pack probably never will again in my life maybe but hey I was <laughs> rocking it on national tv and that's great but it was such a fast like body change and then after the show it's like oh well now I don't dance all the time so my body changed then and now being pregnant I've experienced another really fast body change yeah. uh, for you uh, has body image ever been a thing for you that you've struggled with and like what would you say to girls who are in a season where maybe it's like not the time they can work out all the time because I see I see your stories now like you put out so many great workout videos to help moms get back into shape and kind of you know become healthy with their body but also I'm sure it was hard going from like dancing all the time to like totally not being able to do all that and pregnancy which I've kind of faced in a in a different way so you have any advice for that with body image yes so I would say one of the biggest things that's always kind of like stressed me out or made me feel a little bit negative about myself is when I feel like my body can't do the things that it normally is supposed to do. Yes. As far as image, like the way my body looks, I feel like my parents really, really ingrained in me to not focus on that and focus more on what our bodies can do. That's great. So it kind of shifted in a different direction though, I because love that. then there are times, I mean, when I got pregnant, it was hard because I could not physically do the things I used to love to do. Yeah. I couldn't go on these long hikes with my husband without my back feeling like it was going to actually break in half yes. or my pelvis <laughs> feeling like it was going to fall out between my legs. Like yes. <laughs> Y'all, we all know that sleep matters and the mattress that you sleep on also really matters. Here's the thing, there's nobody on the planet like you. So why do we think that every mattress is just gonna fit all of us? Whenever you could actually go to something like helixsleep.com and get a mattress perfectly designed for you. Go to helixsleep.com slash Sadie, take their two minute quiz and they'll match you a customized mattress to best fit your life and give you the best sleep. So I went on and took the Helix quiz and I was matched with the Helix Midnight mattress because I wanted something not too firm and not too soft. I kind of like a middle ground here. You can even tell them if you sleep on your back, your stomach, your side. I typically sleep on my side and they will even match you for the perfect fit for how you sleep and how you would like to sleep. You can try for 100 nights risk-free. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but I think you will. But just to say, I mean, that's pretty awesome. Helix is offering up to $200 off mattresses and orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash Sadie. That's helixsleep.com slash Sadie for up to $200 off and two free pillows. 
It's interesting because that was the first time where, I mean, growing up, dance has always been my physical activity. As mm-hmm. I've gotten older, I've realized like in order to stay in my best shape and what makes me feel the best, I needed to incorporate some other styles of movement, mm-hmm. some more workouts. And then I got pregnant <laughs> and I'm like, yep. can't really dance, can't yep. really do the workouts I'm used to doing. And that's actually when I started um, my workout program, Move With Lens, because in my so mind cool. I went, there are probably so many women people out there who maybe don't feel like, because here's the thing, I feel like there's so many workout programs or workout people that we aspire to be be like, and it's very intimidating because it's this like perfect image of this is what you need to be to be physically perfect. Yeah. And that's just not attainable for all, all seasons of life. It just isn't. So I created this workout program because I wanted to give something that allows people to focus more on how they feel and how their bodies feel Good. and how their bodies are doing the things that they can do in the moment that they're in. And if that it. means that it's 25% capacity of what you're used to be able to do, that's okay because you're still doing something. So I think that was a huge hurdle for me in pregnancy, just really realizing that I may not be able to do all the things I used to be able to do, but my body is creating life. Yes. I am bringing a new human into this world. Yep. And I'm also still able to get up every morning and walk around and be with my family, spend time with my husband. I'm able to pick up my baby. Like my body is fully different now than it was before. And I don't think it'll ever be the same. And I am okay with that because of what it means. Yes. Because of what that changed body brought for me and what it brought into my life and the joy and happiness. So I think it's like, I think just focusing more on what our bodies can do instead of what they maybe should do or what they should look like is more important. I love that. That is such good advice. I think that's going to help so many people. We're doing a workshop right now on our app, Ella's Sister, and it's called the Powerful Workshop. And it's all about body image. And we're talking that. about that idea that, like, your body is powerful. Like, it's not just about what you look like. It, it's about, like, no. what it can do. And so I love what you're saying. I love that you started that workout program because I honestly can't wait to start it. I'm going to do it right after I have this baby as soon as I can. Because it's just, it's true. Like it's intimidating to look at something and, and it can feel discouraging when you don't look like something, but it's encouraging and empowering when it's like, it's not about the way you look. It's about the way you feel. It's about what yes. you're able to do, what you're bringing into the world, whether it's a baby in life or bringing in just like healthy bones to be able to, you know, carry people when they're hurting or walk to people whenever they need a hug. Like those things are really powerful. So I love that. Um, I want to ask you about, so Dance for the Stars, you know, every Monday it's live, it's crazy, things are wild. And then also on top of that, every season you have a new partner. So you have to roll with the punches a lot. Do you feel like (laughs) that has helped you in life, um, just being more of a flexible person? Absolutely. Like, I genuinely believe that my time on Dancing with the Stars has made me a better wife, sister, hopefully a better mother. Like it has taught me so much about adaptability. And I think that is so key in our lives and in everything that we do is being the kind of person that can adapt to the group of people you're working with or adapt to the situation you're in and be flexible and understanding. That doesn't mean you have to change though. That's the interesting thing is I feel like there was part of me that thought that with each scenario, I had to change who I was to fit into that scenario, but you don't. It's just about having this respect and understanding and really just understanding that people are not the same and that you don't, you would never go about every situation in the same way. So take the time to learn and listen and be there for other people in the way that they need, not in the way that maybe you would think you need. Yep, I love that. My grandpa always says, like, you know, the golden rule is like, join to others as you would have them do unto you. And he says, but also do unto others as they would have them do unto themselves. Because he says that sometimes he <laughs> was like, that. he's like, sometimes the way that I love, we call my grandma Two Mama and Two Papa. I don't know, Two Mama was out there with me on Dance with the Stars. She would always bring her by Chick fil A. But she's she, the sweetest. Sweetest person ever. But they're so different. And he always says, if I love Two Mama the way I needed to be loved, it might not be the way that she always needs to be loved. And so you have to get to know how they receive. And it's, it's going to so be different. True. It's so good. It's so true. I I don't know if you, I mean, I've actually never read the book, The Five Love Languages, Uh but like I've kind of read up on the different things. And 
I always looked at that as like that's just for like marriage and relationships. Right. But no, that that's all aspects all of types life. of relationships yes it's any person that you come in contact with i think the biggest form of like love and respect is knowing how other people's need your love how they need that's your good. support how they need your love how they communicate and it's kind of counterintuitive but i think once you can figure that out it 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 then allows you to receive love the way you want it as well because yep. you feel like you feel like you were actually able to help somebody and that yep. in turn really does give you like good feelings because that's like true love it's it's selfless and love should be that way I love that um so I I have a dating question because I think that a lot of people um you know might think because of the job they have maybe the school that they are overwhelmed with or whatever they believe this lie that like oh well how could I meet my husband if I take this job or if I'm too busy or I'm in this position did you ever think like when you moved to LA and your apprentice was stars did you ever like fear that you would like never meet your spouse was that ever a well, thing so what's interesting is sam and i had met in high school and so we were already dating by the time i moved out to la so i wasn't worried that i wasn't gonna meet him but there's this thought process of like can i do what i want to do yeah and still have that and still like does long distance work can yeah. you still have your separate passions but still have respect and love for each other Right. Where that I think is such like this because so many people were so confused why I was still dating this kid that was back in Utah while I was in L.A. <laughs> like in their minds, they're telling you like that'll never work. That's not you guys have to be on the same path. You have to be doing the same things have to. And I just I think it's so important. And my biggest like I would say the biggest advice that me and Sam found was do you like yep. live your life to the fullest and things it's will good. fall into place the way they are supposed to it's don't good. center your life chasing after this thing that you think you need mm -hmm. because sometimes the things that happen to us and the things that are best for us are not necessarily the things that we thought of no so it's like mm -hmm. I normally think God it's not put, yeah normally it's not and i love that and i think that's like i think it's so easy for us to think that it's up to us to like determine our entire de destiny which yep i don't believe that it is i believe that if we strive to live our best lives be the people that we are chase after our dreams pursue our passions that mm -hmm. life is going to fall into the into the place that it's supposed to be for you yeah i agree i mean honestly with christian and i I wouldn't have thought like I would have never put that together because I was living in Nashville. He was living in Auburn. I was like full on going for like this ministry. Um, he was in school. He was in a fraternity like he was, Just you know, totally fully different. in college. Like, but he I mean, was such a great, amazing guy. And it wasn't that we were doing the same thing in any sense, but we were going at the same things in life and the same things were important to us. And it worked, you know, it was yeah. it ultimately ended up being what we both needed. And so that's such a good point. It's like, you know, sometimes we think, oh, well, it can't work out because dot, dot, dot. And we actually are excusing ourselves from potentially love itself and yeah. potentially the best thing for us. So that's really cool oh, that you absolutely. shared that. And I love that you said oh, that because, yeah, it's true. It's like you maybe weren't doing the same things in life, but your values were in line with each other. Yes. Your values and the things you were passionate about not in maybe a career sense, but in a life sense exactly. and in a family, like that's where things fall into place. And then and that's what matters. And success is bonus, but the family, like all of that is the key to, I believe, like having things happen the way that they're supposed to. I agree, because just like you said, you're like, I didn't even know I was going to be like a pro. I didn't even know this was happening. And all of a sudden it happens like careers change. Like, yes, yeah. like you hope that you do the thing that you're doing for a long time. But they, it's also temporary things. But family, like those, those are the things that last forever. Like who the person genuinely is, that's the thing that lasts forever. And so it's yes. so good. Um, I want to talk to you about your all's YouTube channel, the Arnold Sisters. I think you and your sisters are the cutest people ever. Me and you're Bella. So uh, and my mom always like talk about your family because we just think y'all are so sweet and like cute together. Um, yeah, well, we literally talk about you guys. No, so. no, <laughs> yes, like we, we really do. That's hilarious. Y'all oh are just gosh. so beautiful and so fun. And I, I just love y'all's dynamic. And my sisters are really close to my mom. So I just feel like a mutual thing there. But for Ello, Live Original, like everything that we do is we always say we want to be a good sister and a friend. And 
And like, you are such a good sister and a friend to your sisters, to your friends. And like, you can see that through your Instagram, through your YouTube. Do you have any advice for how to be a good sister and a friend? Um, which I know is kind of a funny question because those are the things we don't even think about. Like, I don't know how I'm a good sister. I'm just, I'm just a sister, you know? But is there anything you can yeah, think of like, that I your sisters, yeah, I know that your sisters do that's like maybe unique to y'all? So I would say that my biggest advice to be a good sister and a good friend is to be the biggest cheerleader for your friends and for your sisters. Yes, that's And great. to have the understanding that there is room for success for everyone. Yes. That there is not a limited amount of success or happiness in the world. So lift each other up. And I promise that success with your loved ones is infinite times better than success on your own. And I yep. think that like in the, I mean, I don't know if you felt this at all, but I feel like in Hollywood in the entertainment industry, there's very much this like, one yes. track mindset of mm -hmm. I'm here for myself. I'm here for me. If anybody else is succeeding, that means I'm not succeeding. And yep. I absolutely hate that mentality. I think that if you go about life, lifting those around you up, all of you together are going to rise instead yes. of one person rising a little bit, you can all rise together, together. in an infinite way. So yes. that's kind of, and I'm so grateful that I have siblings, a mom, friends around me who have that same mindset. We can cheer each other on and also still pursue our own things. And it's not a competition. It's all love. It's all like, let's do this together. Let's live life to the fullest together. Yes. Dang, I could not agree more. That's literally like everything we preach, everything we stand for. I so I'm like, can we uh, use that on all of our social media? Like you just saying that because that's what you I want. Can use anything no I guess, absolutely I mean that's it like girls think that if one rises and then, then they all fall but it's like no yes. like you can all rise together and champion each other not compete with each other like it actually can happen it actually does oh. happen and when you do it it's the most beautiful thing ever it I mean really it takes is. away the jealousy takes away the, you, you would think by championing other people you'd be more jealous people would rise more but, but you're not you're actually genuinely no. excited for people because you yes. love them so that's so and I good. Think it's key. Like I, this is very key because in order to do that, you have to have people around you that have the same mentality. And I have to it's be honest true. there. There are some people that I maybe have stepped away from a little bit because I didn't feel like they had that mentality and that can really affect you. Surround yourself with people who are on the same track as you yep. and decide as friends, as sisters, as partners yep. that you are going to make that your mission and your main goal and That's everything great. is gonna fall into place. That is great, I love it, so good. Well, we're nearing the end, but I did wanna to talk to you about this because I, I think you're one of the funniest people. Like naturally, you're just fun and funny and goofy. And if you, you watch the show, like people know that, like you laugh at yourself a lot and Okay, so obviously like on live TV, like funny things can happen or embarrassing things. Like for me, when I was on the show, like I remember I got like so over, like I guess I just haven't worked out that much. I was nervous and I threw up and like they literally put it on the show. It was like you're in the like, commercials thanks. and you're like, great, thanks. But like you have to just <laughs> learn to laugh. Like. I know exactly. funny things have happened to you and in a culture that wants to be liked, wants to be praised, wants to be admired, like how do you learn to just laugh at yourself when funny things like that happen? So I think this started from a very young age. My dad made it his mission to tease us about something at least once a day. Not yes. like a mean tease, but just a jokey tease. And really, like, as we started to get into those teenage years where we started to be a little bit more self-conscious, he really would just kind of try to level us out and remind us that, like, you're amazing. You're going to do these things. You're going to have mistakes. You're going to yeah. have zits on your face every once in a while. Yeah. It's normal. It's human. Live with it. Love it. And then I feel like I kind of had a moment of, so going back to the very beginning, I talked about how I was on uh, Pro, my very first season on Dancing with the Stars. And then I got bumped down to troop. That was a huge confidence, uh, like dagger for me. That was yeah. like just a really low point of like, wow, I'm not good enough. Like, what am yeah. I even doing? Like, I can't, I'm not good enough. Okay. And then I spent a full season trying to like fit this mold, trying to be this person, trying mm -hmm. to like, okay, I'm going to do everything I can to be exactly what I think I need to be. And it didn't change anything. I was on troop for four more seasons after that. And I finally just clicked in my brain, like, you know what? <laughs> 
I'm going to be me because I'm yeah. happier as me. That's my great. friends love me as me. My family loves me as me. So I'm going to do that. And if that's not enough for this job, then this job isn't for me. Mm-hmm. And that's where I kind of just started to let go. And it's good. I think that's where I gained my confidence because I realized that it didn't necessarily like change anything, but mm-hmm. I was a happier person and I that's felt like great. I was living a fuller life. So I, yeah, I feel like it started stemmed from there. And then, yeah, lots of things have happened for me on national television that <laughs> were just extremely embarrassing. And I just had to learn to roll with the punches and I love it. Now hey. I can look back and be like, I'm really glad that I didn't let that like affect me or embarrass me or anything like yes, that. Yes, that's so good. And it's so cool that you said, that's where I found my confidence. Like in the place where your confidence was shaken the most is where you actually found your confidence. Because when we realize our confidence isn't in our perfection, but it's in genuinely who we are and what we actually just naturally have to offer the world, the talents that God's put in you, the purpose that he's put in you, like that's when you get to live in true freedom. And so, so cool that you learned that. And then you went on to be a pro again. I know you, you won Dance with the Stars. Yes. which is awesome um such a good season too it was with jordan right yep yeah that's awesome so fun i know people love so that fun. well the last thing i want to ask you because it is the month of may which is our mom month uh since i'll be on maternity leave since hopefully by the time this is out i'll have a baby which is awesome i know oh crazy gosh. but what is your uh mom advice for me oh my goodness okay here's the thing I want my mom advice to you is just to go into this knowing that you have everything in you that you need to take care of your daughter. Mm, Everything. That's so good. There's not one thing that is missing from you. God has given you all of the things that you need to care for and love your daughter and just trust in that, believe in that and know that. (laughs) And you're going to literally blow yourself away with the way that you're just naturally going to be able to nurture and love your baby girl. Like it's the most, I mean, I literally have chills saying it. That makes me so happy. It's just, I think you, it's so hard going into motherhood. We just have this mentality of like, everything has to be perfect. We have to have a plan. We have to have this, that. And the biggest piece of advice is just know that you can, you can do this. You have everything you need. Just trust yourself. You and Christian are a partnership, you're a team, like, you guys will be able to to do anything with your beautiful Thank baby you. girl, and I am so excited for Thank you. Thank you, like, oh, that means so I'm much. Like feeling the feels for you, I'm so. I'm happy feeling for you. the feels. I'm so excited. No, thank you. That means a lot. That brings so much peace because you're right. I mean, honestly, the internet will tell you you have to do this and this and this and this and this, and, this. and yeah, it's all probably good things to do. But at the end of the day, like that just yeah. means so much that we already have it all in us that that's who yeah. we were built to be and so thank you I appreciate that you of and your course. daughter ha- make me and Christian so giddy about having a baby <laughs> all your mirror selfies I'm like I can't I wait just- oh I love it I love it and I can't wait to do your workout program and all the yes! things I'm so excited <laughs> all I'm the so things for you. well you're awesome I really do hope that we can get together in person one day uh, shortly know. with our little girls and just get to hang out because it's been way too long but thank you Lindsay you're such an inspiration and just so much fun to talk to you you're so sweet it was so good to chat with you and good luck with everything thank and you and if you ever have any questions or need any like please always reach out i'm always here so oh no i need. honestly will <laughs> thank you <laughs> i appreciate it um grace how's your day going i guess it's night how's your night going it? Yeah, it's going good. Hi, Shirtex. Good. Thanks for staying up. <laughs> no, it's okay. Grace so, is wait, a where owl. are you from? I'm from Northern Ireland. That is so cool. Your that's... accent is so cool. All right, so what's the question that you sent in to the Whoa, That's Good podcast? Um, what is your advice for lonely seasons with friendships? What is our advice for lonely seasons with friendships? Well, this is a hard one because yeah, lonely hard. seasons with friendships, it's hard. And obviously, like the year that we've had, I think a lot of people have experienced this due to COVID and the pandemic and lockdowns and different things where it can just feel really lonely at times. But even before then, like I can remember a pretty lonely season in my life where I didn't like have a lot of friends and it was really hard. But, you know, it's in those times that I look back that I see that that was really the times that God really taught me about who I am. Um, And I really learned what my relationship with the Lord looked like, just me and him. 
And it was a really cool time to cultivate that relationship with him and figure out who I am. Um, And that's like, you know, easier hindsight 2020 to say it's easier to look back and be like man that was such a special time in my life because I got to know who I am and I got to become so close to God but I also know that in the midst of it it can feel really hard so my advice to you would just be like dive into it instead of trying to just get past it like instead of being like oh I'm so lonely I hate this I need friends I need that like just sit in where God has you because the more you know about yourself and the more you know about God ultimately that's going to lead you to the type of friends that you want to have and I think taking the time to become who I am at that time really helped me form the friendships that I formed in the years to come. And so even though it feels like a throwaway season, it's actually a really pivotal time in your life. Um, So I would just encourage you to dive in. Don't think that anything's wrong with you because you don't have friends right now or you're lonely. Don't think that it's your fault or it's because of who you are. Maybe it's just a time where God's just like wanting to remind you and make you who you are. Yeah. Yeah, that's so good. Yeah, I know I can think about, for me, there's been really I, two seasons that I can really remember where I was kind of coming out of old friendships and kind of, you know, trying to find new friendships. And I know that kind of at that time, you know, those were some, some lonely times where, where I was transitioning a group of friends and trying to really figure out who I was as a person. And those are really such just key moments and key times in my life where I feel like my relationship with Jesus really deepened. And it was because I was able to to focus less on my friends and, and, and spending out with them and doing different things with them. And I was really able to to read more, to pray more, to be by myself more and really, um, you know, be okay with myself. I'm an introvert, so I know that it is easier for me to kind of, you know, be lonely, I guess, in a sense. But um, for me, I really, you know, used that time to to really deepen my relationship with the Lord and really read more and pray more and really enjoy that because I knew that sometime I would come out of that and sometime Mm -hmm. I would would find friends that that I'd really be close to. Um, So I just encourage you, kind of like what Sadie said, just, you know, uh, enjoy it, be in it, soak it in and don't, you know, wish it away and don't wish for the next one to come, but enjoy your at because you're there for a reason. Yep. Well, I hope that helps you, and I hope that encourages you in your time. Thanks for asking us such a vulnerable question. Yeah, thank you so much for answering. Yeah, so it was so So nice nice to to talk to you. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Hey, bye. Bye. So sweet, and what a cool accent, all the way from Ireland? Ireland, Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland. So further away. Y'all, I love how the podcast reaches so many different people, so many different places. It doesn't matter where you are. We hope that you're so encouraged by the advice that we're able to give and get from so many other people. Don't forget to keep asking your questions to the Well That's Good podcast Instagram, and we would love to give you a call. You know what's cool about Northern Ireland, too? What? You can swipe up from that far away. What the heck? What, what, why? Swipe up, people. There's no swipe up. <laughs>